Hello friends. Good morning. And I welcome you all to this new class. We are dealing with the dams. We saw the advantages of the dam. And we said it is called multi-purpose projects because the dam has got many purposes. It is used for producing electricity. It is used for irrigation. It is used for internal navigation. It is used for uh, entertainment. And it is also used for uh, growing of fish and so on. So there are advantages are there. But when we look uh, very closely, we will find there are a lot of disadvantages are also there. So we saw some of the disadvantages in the last class. And again still there are a lot of troubles are there because of the dams. So we shall see today how the dams are affecting the lives of the people, especially the lives of the farmers, the people who are living at the food plains, at the forest, near the forest plain and so on. We shall see them. So you can follow in your textbook, page number 27, the last paragraph. So irrigation has also changed the cropping pattern of many regions with the farmers shifting to water intensive and commercial crops. So we said one of the advantages or one of the usefulness of dam is the water can be channelized to the field and can be used for irrigation. So before the building of these dams, people have been completely depending on monsoon rain. So they will cultivate at the time of monsoon rain. Um, let's say for example from uh, June to July, August, September, by September they will harvest. So after that it is a dry season and they are not able to cultivate major crops like uh, rice and so on. So because of these dams are built, people are getting water always. Throughout the year they are able to get water. So even if there is no rain, they are able to cultivate with the help of this. Uh, dam water, so water will get, they will get and they have, uh, they are able to cultivate. And so when people saw this water is available, they have changed their cultivation pattern. Before they were cultivating only during this uh, monsoon season. Now they have started cultivating two times, three times in a day, in a year. So they cultivate two to three times in a year. Because water is available throughout the year they can cultivate. And so people started changing their cultivation. Before they were cultivating only depending on the rain. They cannot cultivate anything that they want because water will not be there. And so now water is there and therefore they started cultivating the crops that, can, that requires more water. Because water is available they can plant something that is uh, that uh, requires more water and also they started cultivating commercial crops before most of them were cultivating only for their own purpose for their own consumption now they have started commercial cultivation commercial crops so that with the help of this water they can cultivate a large area and produce plenty of crops and they can sell it in the market and make money so that has become the intention of these people so who changed their idea, who changed their life, who changed their plans? It is the building of the dam. After construction of the dam only, people began to change this. So these farmers who are doing this special cultivation with the help of this dam water, they are able to get a lot of money because they can cultivate in a large area and they can sell it in the market and get a lot of money so they become very rich so this has great ecological consequences like salinization of the soil so we have studied early when we are studying about the soil that one of the things that degrades the soil is the salination of the soil that means due to over irrigation the quality of the soil is destroyed because always water comes there and 
it is, contains a lot of like chemicals, chemical elements and the soil's quality is going down. So over irrigation, it is uh, responsible for the degradation of the soil. So why are they over irrigating? It is because dam is the water, plenty of water is available and therefore they start irrigation. And in that process, after a few years, the soil becomes useless. Soil is not able to produce more crops. So it is affecting the soil using too much of water. Then at the same time, it has transformed the social landscape that is increasing the social gap between the rich and the land less poor. So we said when this water is available from the dam, people are able to cultivate large areas of fields. So who are the people cultivating these large areas of field? Is it the poor farmer or the rich farmers? Certainly they are the rich farmers who have got large areas of land. Those poor people who were uh, living near the river because of building dams, they have lost their property, they have lost their house, they have lost their farm, land, everything. And so this dam water is not useful for them. They cannot cultivate, they don't have land. But people who are staying far away, they can take through canal this dam water to their field and cultivate large areas and sell it and make lot of profit. So at the expense of these poor people, this dam is built because they have sacrificed their property, their house, their field, everything they have sacrificed for the sake of the nation, for the development of the nation to build up this dam. And at the end, who are the people benefiting? The poor people, they don't need this water anymore because they have no more field. But the people who stay far away, they are not affected by this dam but they are getting the benefit of the dam. So, the, because of this dam, there is an increasing distance between the rich and the poor. So, people who have got land, they become richer and richer, and people who don't have land, or the poor people who have lost their land, they become poorer and poorer. So, the dam is supposed to make the development in the country, supposed to increase the financial situation, the economic situation of the people but it is doing just the opposite it is helping some people to become richer and richer and it is making some other poor people the poor farmers they become poorer and poorer so that is the dam is <coughs> that is one of the ill effects of the dam it is instead of uh, making an overall development it is helping only certain people, especially the rich people are helped and they continue to receive benefits, they continue to become richer and richer. Then, as we can see, the dams did create conflicts between people wanting different uses and benefits from the same water resources. So another ill effects that we are going to study. So one thing we said it is increasing the gap between rich and poor. So the gap between the rich and the poor are increased. Another one is conflicts are they fight. It creates conflicts. So uh, very, of, very often we can see uh, reports in the newspapers that people are fighting for water. So, where there is a dam is built, one people, group of people will say, we want to use this water for irrigation. Another group of people will say, no, we want to use this water for uh, supply to the urban area. Other people will say, no, we need to use this water for uh, making, producing electricity. So different people will have different ideas and they want to use this water for different purposes. And so naturally what will happen? There will be conflicts, there will be fights. 
So there will not be a unanimous decision that we shall use this water only for this purpose. No. People, they have their own. A farmer will say, all the farmers will say, no, we shall use this water for irrigation. People who are living in the town, they will say, no, we shall use this water for supplying to all the families. And people who are in the town or people who are running industry and so they also will say, we shall use this water for industry purpose. We shall use it for producing electricity. We need a lot of electricity for running the industry, the machine and so on. So different people will say different things and there will be conflict. There will be fight between different, different people. Then let's say an example in Gujarat. There is a, a river flowing through Sabarmadi. So people or the farmers living at the base of this river, the river basin, they were agitated and almost caused a riot over the higher priority given to water supply to urban areas, particularly during the droughts. So, <clears throat> in this Sabarmadi river, the water, that water was used for supplying to urban areas, people who are living in the urban areas, especially in the drought season. So, people who are living near the dam, people who are living near this river, they are not given water, they are not given priority. Instead, this water is given to town people and so there was almost a fight between these people, the village people and the town people. So such kind of things can take place because of the building of the dams. And interstate water disputes are also becoming common with regard to sharing the cause and benefits of the multi-purpose projects. Another thing that can be there because of the dam is conflicts between different states. So one river may be passing through different states. It may enter from one state and go into another state, then pass to another state and so on. So when a dam is built, the benefit may be for two states or for three states. And so there will be fight again. Everyone may not get equal amount of water. The state that is closer to the dam, they may get more water. So, the dam needs to be maintained, the expenses are there, so who will meet that expense? When there are two or three states are involved getting the benefit from the dam, who are the people going to take the responsibility of repairing the dam, uh, meeting the expenses, maintaining the dam and so on. So, everyone will say, I want water, uh, let him do the repair. So everybody is trying to escape from the responsibilities. Everybody wants to get the benefit, but to take up the responsibility, nobody will be willing. So it can uh, lead to rivalry. There will be constant fighting between states. In the Uttarakhand uh, to Kaveri River, we know there is always fight between Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. Karnataka will say, no, we will not give water to Tamil Nadu. And Tamil Nadu farmers will get agitated. We are supposed to get this much water, but all the water is taken by Karnataka farmers. So, a lot of fight every year when there is a drought season, we can hear in the news, in the newspapers about how people are fighting. They forget that they are all Indians. Then they, uh, when the need comes, they will say, we are Karnataka, we are Tamil Nadu. So, we change our attitude that unity is not there. So, the dam, instead of bringing unity among the Indians, people belonging to different states, there should be unity. All should be able to feel that we are all Indians. His need is same as my need. We should be able to see in that way. Instead, it is making the people enemies. They fight each other. So many people get injured, die and so on. So, all these are happening because of this dams, multi-purpose projects. So that is very uh, a serious thing that we need to see. So we do it for one purpose, for the development, for the benefit of the people, but the opposite is taking place. So that is really a, a 
very sad thing for us to say. So there's a little general knowledge is given there about do you know? So do you know Krishna Godavari disputes is due to the objections raised by Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh governments. It is regarding the diversion of more water to Koina by the Maharashtra government for a multi-purpose project. So this would reduce downstream flow in the states with adverse consequences for agriculture and industry. So the river Krishna Godavari they wanted to make the Maharashtra government want to make a dam there. But then Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh they are opposing. They say no we cannot make a dam there. If you make a dam there what will happen? You will take away all the water and now farmers will not get water. So you are blocking the river, making dam there and making providing water to all your farmers. But the farmers in Andhra Pradesh, farmers in Karnataka and the industries in these two states, how will they get enough water? So it is going on. This fight, this dispute is going on. Otherwise, this dam would have been built long ago. Then most of the objections to the projects arose due to their failure to achieve the purposes for which they were built. So every time when a new dam is built, government has got a special plan that this water will be used for irrigation or this water will be used for electricity production or this water will be used for the people of this stage. So there is a purpose is there for every dam. But after the completion of the dam, the government forgets about all the purposes they simply use at their will. And so the purpose they have failed to achieve, that makes people unhappy and they begin to fight and so. So if the government can stick on to the purpose of the dam and use it, make sure that it is meeting the purpose, then I am sure people will be very happy. Otherwise they will be unhappy, they will be going on fighting against each other. And ironically, the dams that were constructed to control the floods have triggered floods due to sedimentation in the reservoir. So one purpose, when we are studying early research, one purpose of dam is to control the flood. So all the water will be stored in the dam and therefore the rivers will not overflow. So that was one of the purpose of building the dam to control the flood. But what actually what is happening? All the mud that is coming, all the sediments that are coming in the river, it is not able to go because of the dam. It comes and remains inside the dam and it becomes higher and higher. The amount of uh, sediments, the amount of sand and silt, everything becomes uh, increasing more and more and the depth of the dam is becoming less. So it is causing the flood instead of uh, reducing the flood, instead of saving in the front of the flood, the dam is causing the flood because of the sediments coming and settling in the dam, the depth of the dam becomes less and less and so very fast it starts overflowing. And moreover, the big dams have mostly been unsuccessful in controlling floods at the time of extensive rainfall. So whenever there is heavy rainfall during the summer season, during the monsoon season, we hear the news in the newspapers and the TV and so that government is planning to open the dam to send out water. So they are supposed to collect the water and preserve it but now the dam has become very small because of the mud falling inside and so they are planning to send out water and that is very dangerous to the people who are living there. Suddenly so much of water comes out and people will be losing their field, their cultivation, everything. So it is supposed to help the people but it is doing harm to the people also. And the floods have not only devastated life and property but caused extensive soil erosion. So when they send out water from the dam, when it is full, 
it is causing soil erosion. So suddenly the amount of water is increasing. The river natural flow means it will have same flow always. But suddenly the downs are open and the amount of water start flowing is very high and it will carry away all the soil from the river. And sedimentation also meant that flood plains were deprived of silt and natural fertilizer uh, further adding to the problem of land degradation. And when we were studying about the rivers, I hope you remember that northern plain and so is becoming very fertile because of the rivers Ganga, uh, Brahmaputra, Indus and so is bringing lot of sediments from the, uh, from the mountains. That's why that area becomes very fertile. So here if you make a dam, what happens? All the sediments come and get uh, stopped there inside the dam. It is not able to flow ahead because water is blocked there. So these sediments are supposed to flow and go and settle at the river banks and make the soil more fertile. And that way the soil's quality will be kept up every year. Together with the rainwater or the flood water, the soil is supposed to get enriched. New sediments, new alluvial soil, clay soil are all supposed to come and settle down in the land, in the plain area and make the soil rich. But because of the building of the dam, all these things are not taking place. The sediments, the clay, all these are not coming down because of the dam. And therefore the soil becomes poorer and poorer and farmers will be the loser they will be suffering their crops will be very poor quality and it was also observed that the multi-purpose projects induce earthquakes cause waterborne diseases and pests and pollution resulting from excessive use of water so another great, a grave thing, a dangerous thing from the uh, dam is that it is causing earthquakes. The storing of this water, it is causing earthquake. Then it is also causing a lot of waterborne diseases. A lot of diseases people will get if you use unclean water. So this water that is stored in the dam, it is, it is very dirty we can say, a lot of dirt is there. And so people continue to use this water for bathing, washing, clothes, all that things. Then they can get a lot of sicknesses coming from this water. So people are supposed to get good health, but their health is affected because of uh, depending on this water, because of using this water. So that is another problem that people are facing because of this dams are built. So as a whole we can say a lot of developments are there because of the dam but it is not equally divided, equally not shared the benefits. For example electricity is produced and who are the people using most electricity? These are people who are in the town, people who are running industry, factory and so on. They use a lot of electricity. And the poor people who are sacrificing their land in order to build this town, they may be using only just one bulb or two bulbs. They use very little electricity. So the benefit goes to others. Or people who are <coughs> very rich farmers, they get the benefit of irrigation. They can cultivate large areas two times, three times in a year and they get a lot of money. While the poor people, they have lost even the little farm that they had. And now they have nowhere to cultivation, nowhere to cultivate and this irrigation facility is not beneficial for them. And it is also blocking the sediments. The poor farmers, they depend on this rain and the river water to get their land and trees by a lot of sediments that are carried by the river. But because of this uh, dam is built, they are deprived of that. They are no more getting the sediments. Their land becomes uh, degraded year by year. Then again we said 
it is also causing a lot of earthquakes a lot of people are getting sick water bond diseases because of uh, completely uh, depending on this water using this water and so so benefits are there at the same time a lot of harms are there so benefits very often it is going to the rich people and the harmfulness is suffered by the poor people so that is a very sad thing so it is the poor people who have made this some of this much sacrifice to build this dam and certainly the government should take extra measures to enrich these people to make sure that these poor people are also getting as much benefit as the rich people are getting then only we can say there is justice otherwise one group of people one section of people will be going on making sacrifices and suffering throughout their life and other people will be getting benefits out of it and they will be becoming richer and richer so there is no equality there is no justice is done so let's hope that government will open their eyes and see yeah, work for the benefit of everyone especially try to uplift the poor people of our country and there will be uh, the dis the distinction between the rich and the poor the difference between uh, between the rich and the poor will become less and less and all will live together happily and that is our prayer i hope it will come true so we shall wind up for today and the next season let us next class we shall see again about the importance of water and how to save water and so we shall see in the next class so thank you for listening have a nice day